Block out some time, bro. That's right, an epic combat shotgun review coming your way via the bunker. The Nut Fancy Project, I think, better than ever. It is. I can crank on the videos now. I'm practiced. Well, I should be. I've been doing it for 13 years. I should be practiced. But yeah, it's better than ever in a lot of different ways. Did we have this back in 2009? The bunker, this format? Nope, we didn't. And I'm here by request from TMP Patreon members. They said, yeah, bunker review, dude. For this batch, I'm gonna go back to tabletop. Don't worry, it's not going away. I'm gonna go back to barricade, infield, desert reviews, all part of the formats, but bunker's popular. Do I love it? Eh, I, I, I'm never really into getting in front of the camera. Contrary to perhaps what some people think, I don't. I'd much rather do a tabletop and I'm behind the camera. I ain't scared of it. You know, I'll do it, but it's not like, oh, I get to come in front of the camera. No, I don't get it. Fame, I hate it. I hate it, man. I'd, I'd just assume duck and run. I'm being dead serious with you. I, I do. I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable with it. That's one reason, a little insight, that I feel uncomfortable doing get-togethers. I don't like all that attention and that I'm the center of attention. It just makes me feel like an idiot. Just being honest, I'll still do them. I love connecting with you guys, but I feel self-conscious. Okay, let's get past my personal issues, my mommy issues, shall we? And get on with what I think will be your favorite shotgun review. I'm gonna call it an SRV shotgun review video of all time. I think so. Here's one reason, maybe one reason. I have a very simple short all intro. Right that will be memorable. You will never ever forget this. You ready? No, I'm not going to fart, but maybe next time, maybe down the road in this video, I will. Uh -oh. No, it's this, ready? Crank it open again. Simple. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum. Fight's over. Fight's over. That is a semi-automatic combat shotgun. Amazing. Amazing fight stopping capabilities. Okay, and I'm giving you that intro to make that point. I still love pump shotguns. Love them, love them, love them. Some of them can run really, really fast. But a semi automatic combat shotgun is almost different level of how much lead it can put down range, of its capabilities, and for some folks, for its simplicity. That they can run a semi automatic combat shotgun, but they have all types of problems with a pump action shotgun. And I'm speaking from decades of experience. Decades of having taught friends and cohorts how to shoot a shotgun, combat shotgun, not skeet, not trap. I'm not very good at that, by the way. Um, no, combat shotgun is its own skill set. And a semi automatic combat shotgun, dudes, oh my goodness. Bum, 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 bum. Fight's over. Like that. There's a reason they're put into the mix in entry teams. In fact, any entry team, entry team SWAT, whatever, that issues a warrant and they do not have a shotgun in their mix, I question their tactics. Just me, I, I just question, I was like, why? Why, he should be either the first guy through the door, he could be a breacher. Yeah, I know they're used to blow hinges off doors and affect entry, but I'm saying just in the mix. Because like I've said in past shotgun reviews, got me in speed on that very one. hard to defend against if you're a bad guy. I mean, nine pellets of double odd buckshot coming to you about every 10th of a second. That's a lot. That's a lot. And remember my audience, it's you guys, the responsible civilians, retired and active oh, military, law enforcement code. officials, for constitutional law enforcement officials. That's my audience. And so I do these reviews. You know, gear for the good guys like I've always done here in the Nut Fancy Project. And here we go, circling back, about time, nothing, I know, to the semi-automatic combat shotgun. And man, do I have a winner to review for you now. What do I, what have I been saying in my last reviews? And watch reviews, knife reviews, gun reviews. And I don't know how this is gonna post in the mix, but as a reminder, I've been saying, I'm a value guy, okay? And as a value guy, I gravitate towards things that just freaking work, but they don't rip me off. I don't want to get ripped off. And if it does the job at this price level, why in the world would I go up to this price level? To be cool? 
to be seen on my, uh, I don't know, my forum is like, hey, check this out. That was my beef against the Benelli M2. I reviewed that a couple years ago. It's a great gun. I love the Benellis. I'm gonna go back to that as well. And it had issues with light loads. It jammed, oof, I wouldn't say a lot, but a fair amount. But with full base loads, it ran really well. Uh, and I said in that review, hey, I like the M2, but for the money, Keep going. I can hook into something a lot more affordable that's just as good. Uh oh. That might be more reliable. Jam. Okay, so here we are reviewing this gun right here, y'all. The Stoger M3000 in the bunker. Nothing fancy project of the people, for the people, by the people. That's right. And I'm not kidding about that last part. By the people. Dudes are saying, hey, man, when are you going to review some more shotguns? Tactical shotguns. And I answered them. I'm talking TMP Patreon members because I can, like message there because it's a smaller community i'm not totally overwhelmed like i am in a channel i was like hey dude appreciate the input i'm looking so i'm walking the floor of gunny's the great american gun store we're looking for guns to review and by the way i expect you to buy things from them thank you no i don't get paid for this at all this is completely unpaid pure relationship i just signed this out via federal form 4473 oh, loaned it out for a while maybe i buy it later on <laughs> I see this sucker sitting there. Over. Okay, cool. I like it. It's just a standard configuration, semi-automatic combat shotgun, of which I'm quite familiar with at this point, have been for decades. And then I looked at the price tag, and I'm like, what? Okay. Nothing fancy is interested. That is a low price. And my guys will dig that if... Oh, big if. If stand. it runs good. Okay, and I'm never sold until I take, I shouldn't say never, but I'm usually not sold unless I take it out, run it, run it, run it, and I see, hey, it works good. And I say usually because if it's something similar to something else I tested, then I can transfer experiential data to that item. So we got it. Stoger M3000, bunker, nothing fancy project, epic review. I think that's it. Epic review. Oh my gosh. Seven. I'm never at a loss total. for things to say. I, and I wonder if other video reviewers, they get in front of the camera like, oh, what do I say, you know? I guess I could go over the specs, you know? That's about it. Eight minutes, I'm done. No, that's not me. I mean, I'm like, oh man, I want to say this. I want to say that. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that. And it's like all this flood of experiences that I've had with the type, with, uh, I don't know, just information on how to help you guys. Let me, let me give you a point here, okay? Combat shotguns are in my blood. Okay, they are in my blood. Going back to that intro. Bum, 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 bum. I mean, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I know what they can do. I know they are fight stoppers. I love the pump shotgun, again, but the semi-automatic. Uh, just a simple tube-fed semi-automatic like this, I still love. And as a poor college student back in the 90s and Actually, prior to that, going back to the late 80s, I integrated shotguns into my personal defensive systems, my WROL defensive systems. I've shown you photos. And by the way, I still have a torn rotator cuff. Surgery soon. Stand by. Join Patreon. I'll give you updates there. It's going to be a pain fest. In my blood. I bought a Super 90 Benelli. In a way, I loved it. In a way, I hated it. The way I loved it is that if I fed it high base rounds, double lot buck, pheasant loads are up, slugs, it ran great. It recoiled like a mother sometimes, depending on the load. And back then I was like insane. I was shooting three, three inch double lot buck, three inch slugs. Yeah, I shot a lot of those and I learned because I, I wanted to man up with recoil. I love the Benelli for that, and I knew entry teams use it. I knew it was a very favorite police gun, had a great reputation even back in the 80s. So I bought one, and I actually sold that one. I missed it so much, I bought another one, <laughs> and then I ended up selling that one too. I didn't have a lot of money, so I couldn't hang on to it. The bad for that gun is that it did not like to cycle light field loads, despite what Benelli said. Okay, and why is that important? Because you're gonna feed it a high base round, right? Double lot buck, slug. Even low recoil double lot buck or any defensive round is a high recoil load in the term, as far as you know, its ability to cycle an inertia action, which this M3000 is also. But I didn't have a ton of money and I didn't wanna go out buying buck 
buying slugs, you know, putting all this money, hundreds of dollars. This is way before TMP. And so I probably shouldn't have sold it. As I go back, I was like, man, I kind of wish I had that. But I did. And thus began a hole in my heart. I did have the pump action shotguns, the Winchester Defenders. I always had at least two of them. And, but in the back of my mind is this. Bum, 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 bum. And I missed it. I missed having it in my system. I would sit up at night crying. Oh, my poor Benelli, where did you go? Okay, maybe not that. But you get the picture. It was a hole in my system. I didn't like it. Okay, I just didn't like it. Now, even before the Nut and Fancy project, and trust me, we're going to talk about the M3000, but I think you're going to like this. I was in the Air Force, flying my butt off, working my butt off. I did 10 years active duty. I got hired by Utah National Guard, flying the awesome KC-135 right here, y'all. There's a sticker right there. I deployed to Turkey in the early 2000s. Okay, and, and was I doing TMP back then? No, nah, I wasn't. No. I'm thinking, see, TMP 06, yeah, I'm trying to think of the exact date. It doesn't matter. It was early 2000s. I deployed to Turkey, and lo and behold, I learned about the Turkish shotguns. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, okay? But I do want to make the point that Turkey knows how to make shotguns, good ones. And anyone who says otherwise either got a lemon, which is always possible, or they just don't have experience with the type and they've just gone off what they've read off the internet, which is most likely the case. How did I know? Because I bought semi-automatic Hulu shotguns and I have one right here to show you. It is Cerakoted in Magpul Flat Dark Earth. Here is a 501, I think this is called a 501G Hulu with a simple Velcro shell extender on it. Look how sick that looks in that coloration. So this is one of the shotguns I bought on a deployment. Okay, and I was learning. I mean, I didn't like, oh, this is the best shotgun in the world. And of course, there were some guys in my unit going, oh, I wouldn't buy that piece of crap. Here's what happened. First off, I paid $90, $90 for this shotgun, 90. I've had it forever. Simple Hulu 501. Now, I don't think this is pure inertia. It's also gas, has kind of a gas assist to it. But I went, went out and trained with this thing well before TMP, early 2000s. I don't know, 500 rounds. Sucker never jammed. Light field loads, no jams. Double odd buck, no jams. Slugs, no jams. No parts flying off the gun. Then I turn the gun upside down. I see ISO 9000 or something like that on there. And I'm like, oh, this thing's built pretty good. I start doing my research. I'm like, this is a pretty good shotgun. It's just the exchange rate was such that I got it for an extremely low price. But I'm not done. No, not in my tutelage of the awesome Turkish shotgun capabilities. Then I went back on another deployment and I picked this one up. So this is called a Versan 2000. This is basically a licensed Beretta 901, I believe. It's an aluminum receiver, standard stock configuration, extended tube, kind of a hunting shotgun because it has a ventilated rib, nice white dot, extended tube once again. It's freaking awesome, this gun is. It's totally awesome. Okay, and I shot this one like crazy as well. Same thing. You know, it's, it's totally reliable. It's accurate, it's lightweight, and I'm like, wow, my soul was filled again. Fast forward to present day. Okay, I started the Nut and Fancy Project about 13 years ago. All this experience comes with me. And then I grab this gun right here, and lo and behold, it has all of those same qualities. It's made in Turkey, the Stoger M3000, and it is basically the same gun I was just holding up, the Versan 2000. It's an inertia-driven aluminum receiver, short barrel, extended capacity combat shotgun. So I had a lot of experience with a gun just like this one long before I hooked into this M3000. I took this one out in the desert. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in this SRV. Started shooting it and guess what? Yep, it's just like those other Turkish 
auto shotguns. In other words, pretty darn incredible. Pretty darn underrated. Never mind the price. Going back to the M2 review, this is what I'm talking about. And, and by the way, it's not just the Turkish shotguns. I'll also throw in there the Mossberg 930. That thing is amazing. The Jerry Mikulik one, dude, I, I reviewed that. I love that gun. It's awesome. So don't think I'm just focusing on the Turkish shotguns. No, any value auto shotgun that works, I'm a fan. Why would it go out and spend all that money on a Benelli? Unless you just do it for bragging rights online, second cool. I kind of get that, you know. Well, it's used by entry teams. Oh, I know it's no better than these other ones, but there you go. I, I do get that. Second cool flag always plays here in the Night Fancy Project. And anyone can say, hey, I know it's not the best. I know it's expensive. But for second cool, I love it. We can't criticize that. We all have things like that. For instance, this watch. Casio GA1100 Kilo Hotel in olive drab. By the way, it's a good balance of first and second cool. It's amazing. I reviewed the Gravity Master watches a while back. Go check out that review. I'll put a link to this one below if they still make it. It makes me happy. You know? And so I could always throw out the second cool flag on this. Hey, I don't like that watch. I'm like, it makes me happy. I like it. I like the olive drab color. It looks technical. I can swap time zones with it readily. Get out of jail free card. Stoger M3000. It's just like those other guns, which is to say it's awesome. It's awesome. I became a believer a long time ago, you know, coming up on two decades ago. And still to this day, I'll hear critics of the Turkish shotguns. Like, oh, it's crap. I was like, you just don't know what you're talking about. If you hear someone saying that, at least on the brands that I've talked about, to include Hulu, to include Stoger, just do an about face and leave. So, dude, they probably also think this gun's crap. This makes tactical elitists cry. The, the pistol for the review is a Smith & Wesson SD9 value pl pistol. Yeah, it was talking smack out there in the desert as it was shooting one whole group at about 10 yards. Go watch that review. TEs will hate this gun. It's awesome. It's about the same way. There's, there's prejudices out there. Here we go. Philosophy of use. Uh, you get it. I introed with it. It puts down a lot of lead, okay? In a lot of people's minds, I mentioned this as well, easier to shoot. I want it in my systems forever and always. At least a shotgun, usually a semi-automatic shotgun. Now, let me say this. There are magazine-fed semi-automatic shotguns. Some are good, some aren't that great. You might be tempted to go with those, and you can. They're more complexity. You know, you have these big old magazines that you have to integrate into LBE somehow. Sometimes when you leave those magazines loaded, those little plastic, not little, but those soft plastic shot shells start compressing. And then you've left it loaded for, I don't know, let's say a week. And then you go out to shoot and it's jam, 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 jam. This isn't a brass case. In my experience, if you leave your mag loaded, you know, I'm talking in a horizontal fashion like so, they're going to squash, squash each other and you could have some problems. The Segas come to mind. I've seen all types of problems with Sega guns. Two-fed auto shotgun? I know the round capacity ain't that great. This is seven plus one. It's adequate. But you don't have that problem. You don't. Philosophy of use in. It's simple. It works. It's time proven. It's still a favorite of law enforcement. It's still a favorite of certain military organizations is still a favorite for a lot of guys that know shotguns semi-automatic and i'm putting forth to you the stoger m3000 as a total winner value combat shotgun okay and the rest of philosophy of use is standard home defense without rule of law fun gun totally go out it's really fun hunting no get one with a ventilator rib like i showed you that verse on 2000 there we go features review it is inertia driven, okay? Not a gas driven. And for you noobs in the shotgun world, what that means is that it's driven by recoil. It's a recoil operated shotgun. Hold it tightly, put it up against your shoulder. You generally won't have problems. We'll talk about reliability, how it shot in a little bit. Okay, now the recoil spring on this Stoger M3000 is actually under here. It's in the forearm. It doesn't go into the buttstock like a lot of others do. And I think the Hulus do that. Is that important for here? I don't know. Not really because you have a full stock. You're probably not going to put a folder on it. But it kind of follows 
what the Benelli M3 does. The convertible shotgun and go semi-automatic, semi-automatic can go uh, pump action. This one can't do that. It's only semi-automatic, but it's kind of interesting that it's a uh, recoil springs up here is up here. No, I'm not going to take it apart. Now being inertia driven, uh, let's go back to the early 2000s when I started shooting these other guns. Uh, I had a little bit of trepidation, not for the quality that I was seeing in the Hulus, like this one right here, but because I was thinking, well, inertia driven, I've been down this road before. And again, this one's a blend. That's probably not the best, best one. It's uh, both gas and inertia. I'll use the verse on. There we go, this one. It's just basically like the Stoker. In fact, it's almost identical. Then I started shooting light field loads out of it. And like I said, dude, reliable. Holy cow, reliable. Like, well, that's how you do an inertia shotgun. In fact, in this Versant, I can't ever remember a jam. And maybe I'm just forgetting. It has been a long time. By the way, I put these on so it doesn't scratch up all my other guns in the safe and I'm not taking them off. It's just, you get like a little neoprene tube, snip it off and it, you know, the charging handle is protected. I didn't used to do that and I had these scratches coming on my receivers. Pro tip. This thing is awesome. Unless you want your guns all scratched up. So inertia driven, Stoger M3000. Yeah, I've been down this road. Hopefully it performs as well as those other Turkish shotguns. We'll get, we'll get to that again. Front sight is pretty excellent, protected by ears. It's a light pipe variety. I'm not overly concerned with that here with the Stoger M3000 because it's not exposed. I've said in previous reviews, I am, ex I am concerned about it because this plastic stuff breaks off so readily, like on a pistol, if it's just hanging up there, really easy to snap off. Here it's protected by wings. Could something get in there and bust it? Yeah, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. It's paired with a peep sight that is also ear protected. It's just a single peep. It's not like a flippable aperture. But man, it's, it's adjustable for windage and elevation. The sights on the M3000 are fantastic. They're just perfect. So perfect that I just opted to run it with the sights and not put like a red dot on this included Picatinny rail, y'all. Notice the groove so you can sight down and use the sights. I know they're not the only ones doing it. The Mossberg does it too. But I love it when they do this. Included Picatinny rail, which by the way, did not loosen during shooting. Sean the TMP -er helped me test this gun. Thank you, Sean. This did loosen though. I did want to mention this. This front sight right here on the M3000, make sure you keep it tight. There's a little Allen screw right here, dudes. And it's buried right in the front sight. And so it was wiggling after I got done with our testing. I'm like, well, that sucks. But I just cranked that Allen screw up. It snugged it right back on the barrel. And you might want to Loctite that. I would use blue Loctite, don't use red. All chrome lined. Just like the Turkish shotguns usually are. The Hulu's chrome lined both the chamber and bore, so is a Versan product, so is a Stoger, Stoger product, just like a Beretta, just like a Benelli. So do you have to have that with a shotgun? No, but I'll take it. It's a matte chrome lining, nice. it's pretty excellent. It it so it just makes it that oh, much more corrosion too. resistant. Yeah. Cylinder bore here, yep, yep. no screw and chokes for this value combat too. shotgun. Yeah. Yeah, Does totally it make me sad? Bad. No, I don't care. For the ranges you're gonna be shooting this at, at it's gonna be, 30 yards or inside, you won't need it. I've always said that. Uh, would I like it? Well, like I said with FNSLP, which by the way, I have sitting here in the bunker, I'll show it to you. I like it, sure. But for this price, huh. if this gun costs like, well, like a Benelli and it didn't have screw and chokes, then I would have an issue. I'm like, well, I'm getting ripped off in value here. It should have screw and chokes, but just remember the price. Again, magazine tube. Uh, it's not supported here. Do I care? Not really, because it's really not long enough. When you go into the three gun variety, and by the way, they do make a Stoger M3K in a three gun variety and it has a really long barrel. I think it's like a 22, maybe it's a 24, I don't know. And it carries a lot of rounds. I think the magazine tube, they're like a lot of three gun varieties do. It extends past the barrel. You'll need a support there. Now you could put one on here if you wanted to like tie in, I don't know, whatever sling, but there is a sling swivel here on the Stoger M3000, rotates. Much like a lot of the other shotguns I've shown and have shot over the years. It's really easy to take apart here if you need to. Uh, I did say I would not hunt with this, but if for whatever reason you wanted to hunt, you could take this apart, put in a wood plug to meet, uh, if you're shooting waterfowl, so you can meet, I think it's a three round restriction, right? If you shoot geese or ducks, something like that. But you could plug this one up and it'd be just fine. Here's your forearm. Standard, uh, you know, 
form that we've seen other in other places. I would say the traction on this is actually pretty good. It's not FNSLP good. I mean, that's amazing, but it's it's up there. I think the Hulu traction, this one is uh, pretty weak to be totally honest with you guys. So this forearm on this Turkish auto shotgun is a little bit slick how they executed it. A little bit slicker after I Cerakoted it, whatever. By the way, this one does have a ventilated rib on it because it is made to be a hunting shotgun. So excellent, so excellent. Okay, uh, good materials throughout. I mean, again, this is not like pot metal. <laughs> it isn't crap. And this isn't a steel receiver. This thing weighs, I wanna make sure I get it right, six pounds, 14 ounces, which by the way, is exactly the same weight, more or less, as my Versan. My Versan, I think, weighs maybe one ounce less. They're super lightweight, and this is not like groundbreaking. I mean, there's a lot of auto shotguns, Benelli's, Remington's, I think even the Winchesters are pretty lightweight, aren't they? But it's in contrast to maybe like a Remington 870 that does use a steel receiver and uh, it's a little bit heavier. Look at the charging handle on this. <laughs> That's like a competition charging handle. Didn't come loose on me. Awesome. I don't have to put another one on. And if I did, uh, downside to the M3000 is I don't know if there's a ton of aftermarket parts for it. I'm just being honest with you guys. And then we have a red follower here, anodized aluminum, so you know when you've run dry. And this, being a European auto shotgun, and I've talked about this before, has a very interesting way of loading. I don't have my snap caps here. I only have live rounds. I'm not gonna use those, but I'm gonna explain it to you. If you guys have never used a European shotgun, I really, really love, I'm talking European auto, semi-auto. So with the magazine tube, again, totally loaded, chamber empty, the way I'm going to get that round into the chamber, European system, and I do like it, is you press this button again right here. And then when you do, it will eject that shell underneath the carrier. You can rack your charging handle and it, and it will go into the chamber. It's not doing it now because we're empty. Okay, now this is not your action release button. That's right here. Okay, so if I wanna close the chamber right now, I'll push this and then it'll close. Okay, really cool system. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. I have discussed it before. I talked about it in the M2 video. It works the same way. The cool thing is, and I think the Europeans really like this, in, as in a hunting shotgun, they wanna be able to do a single shot of maybe a particular load. So maybe they have like, I don't know, number eight shot in the magazine. And then they wanna do maybe something different. And so they'll lock this back and they can drop whatever cartridge they want into the chamber directly, fire that one off, and then it will start to feed from the magazine. Get it? Okay, it may sound complicated, it is not. Once you use it, it's pretty intuitive once you get the hang of it. I don't mind it at all. While we have this open, that is the spring-loaded ejector of the M3000. It's back here inside. You can actually move it with your finger. So that'll pop the round out. Your extractor, of course, is right there on the side of the bolt. You can see that of the M3000. Again, a perfect charging handle. Trigger is excellent. I didn't notice any problems with it. I think it shot fast and sure. Just a slight take up. I don't have my trigger scale here, but it pulls crisp enough. It is a shotgun, not a target rifle. And I love conventional stocks. I've always said that. I just love them. They're quick to shoulder. They do make this one in a pistol gripped configuration. It's the same gun, it just has a pistol grip configuration on it. You can get that one if you want. I don't mind those. I had an, my uh, Super 90 had that. The only thing I would say is that if you shoot really powerful loads, uh, make sure, as I've said, you really seat this into your shoulder and you don't take the brunt of that recoil with the web of your hand. That's a downside to any pistol grip shotgun because I did that in the 80s and 90s. I'd come away and I couldn't even feel my hand. It was numb. Well, from shotgun shooting and other things. There you go, pro tip from nothing fancy. Great recoil pad right here, taped in electrical tape as I always recommend. Provision for attaching slings right here. Uh, good traction in the pistol grip. Standard, you know, trigger guard, it's plastic on the M3000 and a features review. Pretty standard, right? I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking, but you know what? It's a value and proven formula. 
On to how it shot the Stoger M3000 SRV here in the TMP bunker. Well, in summary, it shot like this. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, like that. Smooth, fast, reliable, fun, easy to manage recoil. A lot better than I thought it would be. That's correct. We did shoot light field loads. Were they 100%? No. I think we had like a stoppage or two, whatever oh, it was, plugs, but it was like the cheapest stuff available, <laughs> that thing over. like promotional 12 gauge loads, not pheasant loads, not high base rounds. No. But when I did rounds, well, like this, this is not buckshot. This is like a high base round. This is a pheasant load. So you see the high brass, all that hundred percent. Bum, 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 slugs, bum, 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 buckshot, bum, 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 bum. Actually, even that low base promotional crap, boom, 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 mostly. I mean, we're talking like a couple out of a bunch of rounds shot, box after box after box. It did really good. So I would say this gun is very reliable, more reliable oh, with that light promotional crap than the M2 was. Go figure. Right, and it's half the cost. Again, I rest my case what I said about the Benelli M2. You got, you got guns like this. You got guns like this, so you know, why, why? I'm sorry, I keep beating that dead horse, I'm sorry. I just, well, some guys will wonder why. So I'm, I'm just telling you. Okay, accuracy wise, it is a cylinder bore. I didn't like go down and do paper. Why, Team Pierce, do you know why? I don't do that yet. Seven, so it's eight You know, done fancy, total. you say you blow your wood targets up, then you have to spend hours remaking them. That's right, that's exactly right. Said I used to do buckshot patterning. I have these wood paper target holders, and every time I did, I literally cut them in half. Yeah, then I'm spending like six hours back at the house, like making more target stands. I'm like, I'm not doing this no more. But I have a suspicion how it will shoot because I've shot its, uh, I don't know, twin brother so much, the Versan. And not necessarily the twin, but it's the same technology, same type of construction. Fantastic gun. You'll shoot like a three inch group at 50 yards with really careful shooting with slugs good performing slugs and again this has some really decent sights on it the peep sights on the m3k i really like you know good visibility on that front side i don't even have to paint it yeah so i say reliable accurate it'll get the job done we really loved it we loved it and we shot another gun that same day it was a remington v3 tac 13. we love that one as well watch that review separate different philosophy of use different application it's like a, uh, a shotgun pistol. Would I buy it? Do you even have to ask? Get the credit card ready. It's awesome. Yeah, I would totally buy it. In fact, I'm probably going to buy this one as a cast member because it reinforces the points that I make as a value advocate. Performs like a Benelli. Performs like a Beretta. Awesome. Uh, and by the way, I'm not just here, you know, touting the Turkish shotguns. That's not what I'm doing. I mentioned the Mossberg 530. I love it. I, I love this gun right here. I told you I'd show it to you. Here we go. The FN SLP. This is a go to war combat ready shotgun. And you may remember long term TMPers that we actually abandoned this accidentally out in the desert for a very long time. It sat out in the weather for a long time. Yes, we did get it back. And uh, it still cycles awesome. I mean, it even has some wear and tear from that. We shot the crap out of this in like 2012. Yeah, go look at the FN SLP. Now this has interchangeable pistons that you can put in it to adjust for loads. The M3K is simpler than that. It just automatically adjusts the inertia system to field loads. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to tweak the gas system. It's not like the reverse report system on the V3 Remington where you know more holes are exposed to um, the shorter the casing or the shell on the shotgun. None of that plays with M M3000. But I show you this because one, look at the traction on the forend, superior. This is a heavier gun, it definitely is. It's more of a three gun police semi-automatic shotgun, has a cantilever pick rail on it. It is much more expensive. This one was superbly reliable in our testing. Uh, I just shown it because we're talking about combat shotguns. What do I have on there? I still got like a TRS-25. Why? Because it works. Don't replace stuff that works. Hey, it works. Well, you're good. Just because something new came out doesn't mean what you had on there before don't work. Uh, so bottom line, dudes, totally, totally would buy 
and probably will, the Stoger M3000. Comes in a bunch of different flavors. I did not really even address that. So it is basically at its heart a hunting shotgun, just like the Hulu, just like the Versant, just like a lot of the Brettas are, just like any number of uh, auto shotguns. Charles Daly comes to mind too. That's a Turkish produced brand. The Turks know how to do a shotgun. Okay, they're high quality, matte chrome lined, aluminum. I mean, all their materials that I, as far as I know, and I have decades of experience, they're awesome. You know, um, American shotguns are great too. And I didn't mention this is two and three quarter inch and three inch shells in the M3K. So go buy one, be happy, go to Gunny's, the great American gun store. I'm going to tell him to stock a few more in case you guys roll in there to buy it. You'll be super happy with it. You should have in your without rule of law system, you patriot, you for constitutional law enforcement, a shotgun. Does it have to be an auto? No. Pump, pump shotguns are awesome too, but man, bum, 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 bum. How do you beat it? It is a fight stopper. Nothing fancy, bunker. Thanks for joining TMP Patreon or whatever else I use in the future. Thanks for supporting the project. It is a buttload of work, what I do, but I sure enjoy it. And I enjoy talking to you guys there in Patreon and the project presses ahead better than ever. Look at the background. What?